Hey everyone, it's Sevi. The Bonafide Beetle Battle Kings banner is back in this version 4.5 alongside Chiori's debut. It's Ito's first banner since the Fontaine era started, but with Gio being a relatively inert element, how much has really changed for him since then? Well, this video will cover significant build and team updates for him that you can consider if you're interested in pulling him now or bringing him back from his beetle bench. Let's begin. A huge update to its farming and build convenience is the addition of the Husk of Opulent Dreams to the Strong Box. The 4-piece Husk is still his general best in slot simply because it gives huge defense and geo damage buffs that he fully utilizes. Before, farming it was considered quite inefficient since it's paired with the Ocean Hued Clam set. There are a few healers who this is best on, but if you don't fall under that criteria, then spending resin on this domain and just getting all those Ocean Hued Clam pieces is frustrating. At least now, you can either farm that domain and just strong box the bad pieces for the husk set to make your farming go way faster, or just farm another domain while strong boxing the husk set. Even with the new Geo set, the husk still remains better tailored for him. While there's the Marichose Hunter, you would only really consider it if he's paired with Farina, which further restricts his team comps due to her healer teammate necessity, so I don't really recommend it anymore. Basically, you'll still just want to farm and strong box the husk set for him. As for new claymores, well, Ito didn't really get much that are worth recommending over his previous best option which generally boiled down to the White Blind or Black Cliff Slasher for free-to-play options, Serpent Spine as a very competitive 4-star but locked behind the battle pass, and Red Horn for his absolute best in slot with some room to use Skyward or Beacon if you have them. Looking at the addition since 4.0, there are two free-to-play claymores. The craftable, attack-focused title shadow isn't recommended over white blind, and the melusine claymore will generally still lose to white blind, and you want to address his ER via artifact substats or through battery teammates anyway. Between the docking stick and serpent spine as your battle pass weapons, the serpent spine is still way more preferable. And for 5 stars, the only new addition is the Verdict, and its passive doesn't synergize that well for him due to buffing only skill damage and attack, so obviously stick to the Redhorn if you really just want his best 5 star weapon. Basically, when it comes to his builds, nothing much has really changed in a while except for the quality of life improvement for his artifact farming. This isn't all that surprising, but at least it makes your build choices very streamlined. So with his teams, the premium template for him has always been a triple or full geo comp. But of course, there are still some niche team variations outside of these templates, such as a double geo team that can still be good, some of which we'll discuss later. Goro is also still his premier support and is practically joined at the hip with Ito in geo focused teams, especially since his buffs incentivize having at least three geo units in the team. Maintaining the geo resonance effect is also important for the extra damage bonus and geo resistance shred. Zhongli has always been the standard option to enable that, especially given his extra resistance shred, though there are alternative elemental shielders that can work. Having another element to enable crystallized reactions is also another option. Anyway, let's look at his new and honorary Arataki gang members. First up is Chiori, who's running alongside him this version 4.5. In an Ito team, she can just assume an off-field DPS role by leaving her Tomoto on field. In that sense, she is very similar to Albedo's role, including feeding Ito Geo particles to help with his burst recharge. However, Chiori's basically an upgrade over Albedo, especially in terms of damage, and even with minor quality of life aspects like how Tomoto dolls cannot be destroyed by bosses. Her Tomoto also has this mechanic wherein if a Geo construct exists, like Ushi, she creates a second Tomoto, which is a huge damage boost for her. Furthermore, at C0, having Geo constructs created by another party member also gives Chiori a Geo damage buff, so this is pretty much perfect synergy with Ito's teams. If you're a longtime Ito main interested in just really maxing his team potentials, Chiori is certainly an amazing addition. If you get both of them, you can even streamline their artifact farming since one of her best sets is the Husk set, Ito's best in slot. However, if you're only pulling Ito just now, considering that Chiori's also running alongside him, that's going to take a lot of primos to secure both of them. There might be a very small group of players who are diehard Geo fans, and it feels like these banners are there to satisfy that urge. However, don't think you need to pull them both, as Ito has many strong team alternatives that have existed before that don't involve Chiori. And if you find yourself really liking his teams and want to dive into Geo, then you can just wait for her rerun banner. Next is Farina, who has a couple of considerations. Obviously, her damage bonus buff is going to be highly appreciated by Ito, and by providing a constant source of Hydra application, it's easy to trigger Crystallize on enemies and get shielded to trigger the Geo Resonance effect. However, Farina's HP drain will further restrict your teammate options due to the healer requirement. Even Goro's C4 healing will be far from enough to also reliably sustain your team. 
Single target healers like Bennett, Cookie, etc. can be viable, and Bennett's attack buff and healing consolidation packs more utilities in. However, since they can only heal the active character, you generally run into some concerns maintaining your entire party at high HP. So you have to do rotations that cycle the healing between your party members, or you just have to settle with mostly Ito receiving the on-field healing. Teamoid healers are available for an easier experience. For instance, there are animo healers such as Jin, Sayu, and the more recently added Xian Yun, and although Animo doesn't really have good synergy with Geo, they can equip the Viridescent Venerer set to shred the enemy's Hydro resistance to boost Farina's damage. non animo healers are still an option if you want, and Charlotte's a newly added Fontaine Cryo healer who can fulfill that role if ever. Plus, there's the recent addition of the song set, giving healers an artifact set option to give Ito a damage boost. To preserve the triple geo template and maximize Goro's buffs, Ningguang can equip the prototype Amber and a healing focus build to have a team wide healing effect after using her burst, which is more easily spammable due to its low energy cost. Finally, one more addition for Ito is actually Xian Yun. While it sounds counterintuitive to pair them together, as Ito's playstyle mainly involves charge attack combos, and Xian Yun is a plunge attack focused unit, and Animo and Geo don't really have that much synergy going for them, they are still unironic ironically, a good and fun pairing. Ito has a big plunge attack multiplier due to being a Claymore user, and coupled with Xian Yun's plunge damage buff, that can result in big plunge damage numbers. You're basically throwing out his normal and charged attack combos and just embracing the plunge playstyle. A team with Xian Yun can still preserve the triple geo template, but if ever, it's also a good way to comfortably slot in Farina into the team, as Xian Yun's healing can easily counteract Farina's HP drain. So to wrap things up, despite not having much updates going for him, he still has value in his strong damage potential with particular teammates with a fun unga bunga bonking gameplay that's easy to get into and isn't as concerned with reaction setups. Ultimately, much of the same consideration since his last rerun still hold true, like his more invested and ideal teams having specific characters such as fellow 5-star Geo units or a C6 Goro, and how he at least doesn't tend to steal very contested supports because of that. The Sumeru patch barely contributed to his team options. Some Fontaine characters gave him a bit more team building variety, like Farina and Xian Yun, but I'm hoping that there's more to come. Still, with the appropriate investment, his hyper carry teams are fairly strong. That unless the Abyss is specifically designed to counteract Geo, like with Abyss Lector Shields, or has some very specific gimmicks like how the Wina cannot be disabled by Geo application, he will have generally no problems in clearing fast enough an Abyss and just brute forcing some battles with raw Geo damage. But at the end of the day, you can experience Geo power through other characters like Navia, who's got more elemental flexibility, and even Noelle. And there are many other flexible team archetypes in general that can be more accessible to new players. Aside from that, the upcoming banners have a lot going for them, with Kazaha and Nivellet in phase 2 of this version, both being very good characters to pull for with a lot more versatility, and the highly anticipated Arlecchino, who has been officially teased as playable coming in 4.6. So I can see Ito being generally lower priority than those incoming 5 stars, but I wish you a lot of luck if you pull for our Oni King anyway. And that's going to be it for this video. Let me know in the comments who you're pulling for this version or if you're saving. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!